what I'm going to be running here is the bank robbery in progress. Um, I'm going to do it in a 10 minute time limit. And at the end of the scenario, I'll talk a little bit about what occurred in the scenario. So once again, this is a 10 minute scenario and it's being run as a demonstration for how to run a bank robbery scene and specifically for a test being evaluated by E.B. Jacobs. I'm the sergeant responding to a very critical and emerging event that's taken place in our banking district. I feel very confident, capable, and equipped that with the resources of Miami Police Department, the training that I've received and training of my members, we're going to bring this critical event to a successful mitigation. Now it's 9 o'clock in the morning on the first day of school. I'm patrolling in the area I'm, uh, as an aggressive supervisor that I am because I'm concerned about all the construction and traffic in the area and I'm just making sure things are going well. I've heard a tone out go out for a bank robbery that's taken place and I know from previous experience there's a daycare center located in the lobby of the bank which really concerns me greatly. I know there's a school located right behind the area. Now I'm monitoring the radio, I immediately tell dispatch that I'm going to start responding and I monitor the radio. I know that I have a one patrol officer on scene and he's telling me that uh, they've got the front entrance secured, no shots have been fired at this time. But the subjects are fleeing the bank. They've noticed my patrol officer outside, and now they've re-entered the bank. So this is looking like some sort of an active shooter hostage situation. And I feel that by implementing a fully expanded incident command system, putting into account the knowledge and experience that we have and the training that we receive, that we're going to be able to handle this. Now, again, I'm concerned at 9 o'clock because of parents dropping off their kids. It's the first day of school, and the traffic will keep officers from responding if I need to call for 315. So I'm going to have to take all of this into account. I'm going to make sure I establish contact with the officer on scene and make sure he's in a position of safe cover. He's giving a size up report of the area, taking incident command. We're going to name this Bank Command. I'm going to make sure he gives a description. He looks for getaway cars, getaway access points, any secondary devices, booby traps. We're going to immediately get on the radio and give an all points bulletin and a bolo of this. And we're going to do this through social media, through our PIO, and through every mechanism we have in the department. Now, because I'm familiar with this area and I'm comfortable responding in my zone, I'm going to get there within one minute and I'm going to do a 360 and size up any exit points, egress points, the school, get a visual of what's happening in this area. And I'm going to give a location, condition, action, and needs report. I'm going to let dispatch know that I will be the incident commander. I will do a face-to-face -face debriefing with the current officer and establish a command post up pulling up wind in a safe location outside the line of fire. This will be known as Bank Command. I'm going to establish an incident command vest and put a green light at the command post. I'm going to make sure that I establish my command staff, my PIO, my safety, my liaison, and also a scribe to document and start the evidence gathering process. My safety officer will document any equipment needs that we have, helmets, shields, ballistic uh, uh, helmets, and so forth. My liaison will meet with all outside agencies where we'll be establishing a unified command post. And my PIO will set up a media staging area probably two to three blocks away in a safe location so we can disseminate information to parents coming in, to people that are concerned, business people, office workers in the area. Now I'm going to make sure we establish contact with the bank manager and get any kind of blueprints, any kind of alarm systems that have been triggered, any kind of video feeds. So I'm going to also try to determine what kind of weapons they've got. I'm going to try to determine if I have any egress points to the daycare so I can evacuate the daycare. I'm going to make sure all of my vehicles are staged in safe locations and I'm going to do this all in an abundance of caution as I establish the incident action plan. I'm going to notify the field due to lieutenant and notify the chain of command all the way up through and including the police chief because this is a critical event and it could eventually determine establishing the emergency operations center and the EOM emergency operations management bus coming to help here. Now, as an incident commander, I cannot run the scene with the resources I have now. I need to call resources, both internal and external. I'm going to make sure we establish a staging area, two blocks up, pulling up wind with a staging area manager. And I'm going to notify the air unit to give us a bird's eye view from above. I'm going to notify the Office of Emergency Manager for the crime bus. I'm going to notify any neighborhood resource officer because he's got knowledge of the area, contact information, phone numbers, etc. I'm going to notify any crime suppression teams, robbery teams that we have in the area. I'm going to make sure I notify canines so they can help with the perimeter. I'm going to notify motors because motors is very good with movement of traffic and maintenance of traffic. I'm going to make sure that we're establishing at least 12 officers are going to respond to the area. And I'm going to be, since I'm expanding my span of control, breaking this down into divisions and groups as I set up perimeters and I set up areas of safe refuge. Now I know hostage negotiators and the SWAT team take a long time to deploy, so I'm going to immediately notify them 
and hopefully we can mitigate this event before they get here, but if not, I'll ha have them en route. Now, externally, I need to call the FBI because they handle all bank robberies. I'm also going to notify uh, the Department of Transportation to help with any barricades and perhaps changing of light sequencing patterns to get traffic moving through the area. And I'm going to notify Fire Rescue to send a complement of units here with the command level officer to come to the command post and establish unified command. Now, my number one priority here is the safety of the first responders, especially my officers. And great of concern to me is the kids in the school, um, the, the school behind it and the daycare, any civilians at the bank, any occupants of the bank, and then any other area, uh, civilians in the area. We're going to make sure we safely mitigate this event by neutralizing the threat and taking these people uh, in, under arrest. We're going to conserve evidence and conserve any kind of property we can. Now, some of my goals is a perimeter. The inner perimeter will be the school and the bank building. And I'm going to make sure the neighborhood resource officer contacts the school resource and the principal puts the school in lockdown. And my PO makes an announcement out to the media. The outer perimeter will be two blocks in all directions. That will be staffed by motors. And I'm going to establish a motors traffic group, which will have a supervisor and seven officers to address that. I'm going to make sure we surround the bank. And that will be a group with four officers and a supervisor. Now, in the meantime, I'm also going to make sure all calls for service are being uh, on hold or other net office areas are handling the calls for service. Now, at this point, I've established some goals, I've established some priorities, and I've got my resources en route. And at this time, I need to make some tactical objectives and tactical decisions. The first thing I'm going to do is make sure I have enough resources. I'm going to amass a contact team, which will consist of a sergeant and three officers. They're going to be in full protective gear as per the recommendation of the safety officer and departmental orders. They're going to have a long rifle. They're going to have helmets, shields, and vests. We're going to have a second team of four officers and a supervisor. should be known as a rescue team. And the first thing we're going to do is, without waiting for the hostage negotiator, due to the high life hazard that's here, is we're going to establish contact with the bank robbers. We're going to have affirmed that there was no getaway car, nobody outside. If there was, we would have apprehended that person and used that for our intelligence. Now, what we're going to do is establish contact, and we're going to ask the bank robbers, the subjects that are inside, to surrender. We're going to ask them to come out. We've got the bank surrounded. We're going to explain to them that, at this point, we don't want any loss of life. We don't want any injuries. We don't want the situation to escalate any worse than it has already. Now, we're going to give them a few minutes to do this. And during this time, I'm amassing my resources. I'm amassing my incident action plan. And I'm continuing my risk-benefit analysis. Now, if these, officers, if these subjects do not want to surrender, we're going to establish the contact team. We're going to start at diversion. We're going to try to de de uh, take their attention away from us by uh, making noise, throwing some sort of a grenade or whatever we have at our disposal, perhaps in the rear, and we enter from the front or vice versa. Now, we're going to make entry into the structure, and we're going to do this under the protection of all the equipment that we have, the weapons that we have, and we're going to neutralize the threat by whatever means necessary. If there is a discharge, I'll contact the shooting team. I'll make sure the subjects are apprehended, they're patted down, they're searched. And then the shooting team from Internal Affairs is called. Uh, the weapon is confiscated. The officer is separated from all the other people. If anybody's injured or hurt, fire rescue will be there to transport them. Now, I also had SWAT team en route. If for some reason I made a tactical decision that this was an unsafe operation, what I will do then is I'll wait for the SWAT team and I'll turn over the tactical component to them. If this incident goes well, we'll apprehend the subjects and we'll start demobilizing. However, if the incident begins to escalate, I will consider expanding my incident command structure to include a finance officer, logistics, operations, and planning. But I feel right now with the action plans that I've taken, we would have mitigated the event, we would have rescued as many children as possible, and we would have apprehended the subjects peacefully. And if we have to use uh, our weapons, we would have. Now, at this point, I'm going to begin demobilizing the event. I'm going to continue making sure everybody's okay. I'm going to amass all of my officers together. Any injuries, any accidents, any equipment that needs to be replaced, we will. We'll look for positives and negatives and commendations. I'll replace anything that needs to be replaced. I will give department-authorized information to the public information officer to disseminate. We will start closing our perimeters in so we can get businesses back to flowing and traffic flowing in the area. And I'll make sure that we offer victim advocate services, counseling to the kids, and we will have staged the parents in an area. So now we're going to start bringing the parents in and start releasing the children back to their parents. Now, once we clear the scene, this will be turned over to our detective units. This will be turned over to the FBI to continue with any scene processing. And CSI, our, crime, um, our CSI units will process any evidence, fingerprints, videotapes, etc., to develop our case.
Now, back at the station, I'm going to do an after-action report within 72 hours per department policy. Forward this to the training division. Commendations, discipline, schools, remedial training. Uh, after-action thank you letters to the other agencies. And we will put this into our departmental procedures for the future. I feel extremely confident that the actions I've taken here will successfully mitigate this event with no injuries or loss of life. There's your 10 minutes. I was right.